Wheat Jack, Rice Jack, and Good Hot Wilson present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have entered a damaged spaceship far out beyond the Pluto orbit to rescue two unconscious men. All around the ship, huge chunks of metal hurtle through space on an unknown orbit. Happy carry them, Happy. You take this one, I'll handle the big fellow. Yes, Commander, the ship is throwing lands in a stream of metal fragments. And they aren't all going in one direction. It's swirling most like a world. Commander, the battery the ship is breaking us up. Gotta get the into our ship quickly. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Strange Gift of the New Star. Captain Dick Tufel speaking, gang. Speaking to you from an atomic power plant on Mars. Now, they're having trouble getting power, but I think I've found the trouble. Listen to this main power generator. Sounds pretty weak, doesn't it? My guess is this. They've been using ordinary fuel. Let's see what happens when I put in some of this super fuel. Ah, listen to that power now. Supercharging, does it? And gang, when you roll out of bed in the morning, you're just like this generator. You need fuel because you haven't had any for about 12 hours. But listen, don't settle for ordinary fuel. Get supercharged like Buzz Corey does with a power breakfast. Eat those super cereals in the checkerboard packages. Rice checks and wheat checks are the super cereals with that modern bite-sized design for easy eating, delicious, and how. Rice checks is bite-sized shredded rice, and it's triple toasted. Wheat checks is bite-sized shredded wheat, and it's baked crisper than a cracker. So treat yourself to the same swell-tasting breakfast Buzz Corey enjoys every morning. A power breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. <laughs> And now, today's Space Patrol adventure. Few spaceships venture out beyond the orbit of Pluto, the most remote planet in the solar system. As one veteran space pilot put it, only a comet has the time and the fuel to go poking around out there in outer space. But in recent weeks, commercial spaceships on the Neptune to Pluto run have reported a peculiar unidentified object far beyond the Pluto orbit, slowly approaching the space lanes. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have just finished a routine mission to Pluto and have decided to do a little investigating. Now, far beyond the space lanes, they scan the dark void with super-sensitive telescopes. The meteor, Commander? Odd shape for a meteor that size. Too regular. Take a look. I see it. It's shaped like a spaceship. But its surface is rough. It is a spaceship, Happy. But, sir, there's no sign of a rocket bird. No lights in the viewport. It's in free fall. By the looks of it, it's been in free fall for some time. Sir, if it's coming toward the solar system, well, where could it be from? Well, we can tell more about that after we board it. Get our spacesuits, a combo lights, and a combo cutting torch. We may have to force our way into the airlock. I'll maneuver into position while you're getting the equipment. Stand by to cut rockets. Standing by, sir. Cut rockets and apply magnetic holding field with secure airlock. Airlock contact secured, sir. All right, let's go. Get in your space suit. I'll take the cutting torch. You handle the Atomo light and the radiation detector. Hold it. That's it. Did you read it, sir? 
There's some air in the ship, but the carbon dioxide factor is above the danger level. Commander, look back there, down the corridor. There's a man on the deck. Hold the light on him, Happy. I'll turn him over. Is he alive? Yes. I'll have to work fast. Get him back to our ship and try to bring him around. How's our passenger, Happy? He opened his eyes for a minute and then passed out again. I've still got him on pure oxygen. His pulse rate's increasing and his respiration and temperature are approaching normal. Good. He's not as old as I thought at first. That heavy beard fooled me. I have space phone to Terra headquarters for a check on the ship registration. Did you find any identification on the man? None, sir. But from the look of his ship, he must have been aboard for months. We'll have it thoroughly examined when we tow it to Terra. I don't like that high radiation count. You could get in trouble. I wonder how long he's been exposed to it. It may not have been as bad inside the ship, but the rate from the hull is terrific. He must have had some experience. Why, he may have circled through a part of space where no one has ever been before. Control Terra calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5, Sector 7, Blue Orbit. Space Control Terra calling Commander Corey. Corey here, go ahead. I have some information for you now on Spaceship U87. Happy, go back and keep an eye on our patient. Yes, sir. Let's have it, Space Control. U87 is a Saturn registry ship owned by uh, Joe O'Malley. Joe O'Malley? Yes, Commander. We've run a check on O'Malley. He escaped from Space Patrol officers just over a year ago after his arrest on Saturn. Why was he arrested? On suspicion of foul play against his partner, a man named Wes Pent. Everything indicated that O'Malley had disposed of Pence's body. Then O'Malley escaped rather than face trial. Yes, sir. Well, he's awfully close to cheating justice right now. Notify the Terra Hospital to meet our ship. Yes, Commander. And had a crew of technicians ready to examine O'Malley's ship. We're bringing it into Terra. It's hot. Radiation? Right. Hurry out. Commander, he's conscious now. He's talking, but, well, he's still pretty weak. I'll go back and have a look. He wouldn't tell me where he'd been. I asked him, and he, he acted like he wanted to slug me. You get his name? Yes, sir. Was it Joe O'Malley? No, sir. He says his name was Wes Pence. Wes Pence? Had he put on full acceleration to Terra? We've got a double mystery on our hands. Major Robertson's officer. He gave me a preliminary report on O'Malley's ship. Fine. Wait here while I check it. I may want you to go over to the hospital and talk to our space hermit. Well, who is it, Commander? Pence or O'Malley? He may or may not be Pence, but he certainly was not O'Malley. O'Malley was much larger than this fellow. Heavier set and larger bone structure. Mm -hmm. Now I guess we know how O'Malley tried to get rid of Pence, stuck him in a spaceship, and sent him zooming out of the solar system. But the ship didn't have robot controls. And that was more than a year ago. Pence couldn't have survived that long. Happy. Did you see this report of Major Robertson? No, sir. From all indications, the ship must have been spaceborne for six or eight months. Oh, six months alone in a spaceship. Happy, go over to the hospital and keep an eye on him. I'll join you as soon as I talk to you. Sir Robert. Want some water, Mr. Pence? Doctor, I... Oh, you're not the doctor, no, no, I'm Cadet Happy. I've seen you before. No, I haven't. I don't know where. In the spaceship, Commander Corey and I found your ship out beyond Pluto. Uh, yeah. Yeah, as I told you, you saved my life. You just take it easy, Mr. Pence. Lie back and rest. <sighs> oh, I never felt so weak. My ship. Where's my ship? Don't worry. It's here on Terra at the spaceport. Oh, uh, you brought it in? That's right. Fine. Fine. Where's the doctor? Well, he'll be dropping in shortly. I'll ring for the nurse if you want to. Oh, don't bother. I'm so weak. Oh, uh, could you get me some water, kid? Sure. And, uh, raise the head of my bed a little less. Well, Happy, how's our patient? Happy. Happy. What happened? Oh, my head. Happy, where's Pence? I don't know. Last I remember, I was leaning over the bed, fixing his pillow, and, and he hit me with something. It was handled from the bed. Oh, but he seems so weak. He tricked you, Happy. He's escaped. But why? Why, Commander? He's not a criminal. We're not sure he isn't. Robbie's men found a million credits worth of stolen uranium hidden aboard his ship.
We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Hey, gang, you want to hear something funny? Listen to this. That's all. That's Nick. The super off, buddy. Josh, the bus, hey, good. That's all. That's Nick. The super off, buddy. Josh, the bus, hey, good. That's a word scrambler, gang. A machine that scrambles secret messages sent by space patrollers over the space phone. You want to know what that message said? Here, I'll have the machine unscramble it for you. Listen. To get supercharged, eat a power breakfast with instant Ralston. To get supercharged, eat a power breakfast with instant Ralston. Boys and girls, that's one of the most important messages a space patroller ever sent. Yes, sir, when you sit down to a power breakfast with good, hot Ralston, well, boy, oh, boy, that's your day to shine. For instant Ralston packs a wallop in every spoonful. It's rich whole wheat. Remember, rich whole wheat. And that means it'll warm up your motor, tune up your thinking machine, help start off your day with a bang. That's the kind of start Buzz Corey gets. That's the kind of start he wants you to have. So come on, space patrollers, get supercharged. Eat a power breakfast with good hot Ralston. <laughs> And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, the strange gift of a new star. Far beyond the orbit of Pluto, Buzz and Happy found an apparently deserted and powerless spaceship. Aboard, they found a man who identified himself as Wes Pence. This created another mystery. For more than a year ago, Wes Pence had been listed as a victim of a fatal assault by his partner, Joe O'Malley. O'Malley, in turn, has been missing since his escape from Space Patrol officers months ago. Buzz brought Pence to Terra and placed him in the hospital for treatment. But when Buzz entered the hospital room, he found Happy unconscious and the supposedly weakened patient vanished without a trace. Now, on a side street in Kepler City on the planet Mars, a thin, stoop-shouldered man climbs a stairway at the side of a shabby machine shop. He knocks at the door. Better open up. It's business. I don't discuss business this time of day. <laughs> don't you recognize me, O'Malley? There's no O'Malley here. My, my name is Daniel Forbach. You have the wrong address. Yeah, you can fool a lot of people with the name of Forbach front, but not your old partner. My partner? I have no partner. You did have. Don't you recognize me? Oh, I admit I've been through a lot since the day you and I had that fight on Saturn. What? No, it can't be. This is some joke. Better let me in. We've got a lot to talk about. Of course, come in. I'll have to sit down. I'm pretty weak. Well... This isn't much of a place after what we used to have in the old days. I've had to lie low on account of the space patrol. I think I, I did away with it. Yeah, and so did you until a moment ago. You said I was finished, but I managed to crawl away and get help. You know, for nearly a year I thought of nothing but revenge. All those months on Venus, later out in space... Out in space? Yeah. Beyond Pluto. Far beyond. The sun is just a tiny star. It's good to have a strong hate out there. It keeps you warm and keeps you from going mad. What were you doing out there? Chasing a rumor. In your old ship, the U-87. The one you abandoned in the Venus swamps. You, you got that old tub space balloon? Yeah. I lived like a miser to get it in shape. I starved myself. Then one day I blasted out. In your ship. <laughs> uh, that's what we had the big fight about, remember? I wanted you to outfit a ship and you refused. But you wouldn't tell me what you wanted it for. No. But I tell you now, I need help. I thought you hid it. O'Malley, let's face it. One of us is an order handful of space dust without the other. What's the pitch? What's out there, Wes? Uranium. Pure uranium. Tons of it. You're crazy. I've seen it. You don't have to mine it. 
You just lower a cargo scoop and pull it aboard. It's a cloud of uranium. Uranium particles all sizes. From dust out to chunks as big as a spaceship. Now I know you're crazy. Yeah? Well, I brought some back with me. In your old ship. Huh? Yeah. I broke out of the hospital. I came looking for you. The space patrol is going to figure out I stole the uranium. But before they find me, I want to be back here with a whole freighter load of it. A whole freighter load? I tell you, you're crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they say. But I'm going to prove I didn't steal it. And we'll be rich for life. How do I know this isn't some trick of yours? Revenge. All right, O'Malley. I'll find somebody else. By the looks of you, you couldn't promote the spaceship anyway. Now, wait. Just a minute. I've got connections over in Lowell City. There wouldn't be too many questions. Now, you're talking. I can get a spaceship, all right. And I'm going to do it. You better be on the left. We got a line on Pence, Happy. He's gone to Mars. To Mars? Yes, in a regular passenger ship. How did he get the money? From a safety deposit vault in the Terra Bank. Pence put it there two years ago. The banker got suspicious and reported that he identified Pence from a description. Well, and then you checked with the spaceport? Right. He got on the transport ship to Kepler City. He was going to blast off right away and lead the search for him. As soon as he realized his ship was here on Terra, he knew we'd found the stolen uranium. That's another mystery about Pence and his ship. That uranium wasn't stolen. A careful check has been made at every plant handling uranium. None missing. But if he didn't steal it, well, why did he run away from the hospital? The more important question is if he didn't steal it, where did he get it? Hey, that's right. Pence couldn't have owned that much ore by himself. Suppose that uranium wasn't processed. Suppose it's natural, pure uranium. But, sir, it doesn't exist that way anywhere in the solar system. At least not in huge chunks like that. No, not in the solar system. But where did we find Pence? Open rockets. He had been outside the solar system. I have an idea Pence is going back. There he came from. For more uranium? Mm -hmm. But Unless he gets medical treatment soon, it won't do him much good. Huh? Pence is in a very bad way from his last prospecting trip. Come on, Happy, let's get one. Commander, I've just decoded the message from Security Lab. Here it is. Very interesting. Rather startling, isn't it, Happy? Well, sir, I just deciphered it letter by letter. I didn't take the time to read it over. Something about uranium and helium. That's all I got out of it. It's a further analysis of the uranium on Pence's ship. A notation by Dr. Bryson. What does he say? According to him, pure uranium could be found in space. Matter hurled off by forces in a newly formed star, he says, might consist almost entirely of uranium. Well, isn't that the way the uh, solar system was supposed to have been formed? Yes, but our system is billions of years old. The original uranium has decayed into lead and the other elements, including the lighter gases like helium. Well, then this stuff that West Kent's found could be a hunk of a new star. Well, new as far as the life of uranium is measured. Could be millions of years old. Doesn't sound very new to me. No, but in that time, it could cross interstellar space and come close to our solar system. Space Patrol calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Space Patrol calling Commander Corey. Corey here. Go ahead, Space Control. Report on suspect West Pence. Let's have it. Man believed to be Pence blasted off a special cargo freighter from Lowell City Mars spaceport two hours ago. Destination unannounced. Why wasn't he stopped? He wasn't recognized by guards until the full description reached us after blast off. Pence was with another man. Was the other man recognized? The two guards who noticed Pence have checked old files, Commander. They've only rated their own identification as number three reliability. Well, they aren't too sure. Well, what's their opinion? They think the other man resembles. Joe O'Malley. Pence's old partner. Yes, sir. The two men arrived from Kepler City. Space Control, can you give me any information on the vector taken by that ship? Our routine view scope face shows it uh, headed generally toward Neptune. Its registry is MSC-312. Thanks, Space Control. Corey out. Happy to check the application chart. In a blast off from Lowell City, Mars, what other planets would lie close to the Neptune trajectory? Well, none very close. Run a test trajectory from Mars to Neptune, then out beyond the Pluto orbit. What have you got? Well, if I go out far enough, it, it puts us roughly in the sector where we found West Pence. We'll keep on that vector unless we hear that their ship has been sighted in some other part of the system. You think they're going out for more uranium? If they are, we're in for a good long trip. Get some rest, Happy. I'll call you in three hours. Well, how much further is it? Just hold this vector. My best calculation, the uranium cluster is moving at about the same velocity as Pluto. Which means...
Abby, I think I picked them up in the deuce scope. Well, it's about time. I've begun to think they veered off on another vector. Not only that, but I've found something else in the deuce scope. It registers as a blurred object or a collection of small fragments. You mean this thing up here in the corner of the screen? Right. Hence, the ship seems to be heading right for it. Wes, what's that view scope? I told you a while ago, it's the uranium. We're nearly there. No, I mean the rear view scope. It's a spaceship. Huh? You're right. And if they're out this far, they're after us. What do we do? We'll lose them in the swarm. Huh? We'll get the uranium between us and them. When they get closer, those pallets will cloud out their view scope so bad they'll never find us. Here, let me take this one. Put on more acceleration, Hap. Keep them in sight. Crazy fools. What are they up to? They're flying right into that cluster. And it's uranium, all right. Our radiation instruments are going crazy. Hint must be trying to pick up some chunks at this speed. They'll crack up, sure. Probably trying to ditch us. Don't get any closer till we determine their next move. It's working. We got them buffalo. Space patrol, all right. Yeah, they're fine. That means Commander Buzz Corey. We'll evade them. Scoop out some uranium and head back for Mars. Wes, look out. We're right in the middle of the swarm. Ah, calm down. We're keeping pace with them, Wes. <laughs> Wes, do something. Uh, you got us in the chip. I'll lock the compartment before we lose our air. Help me. I'm hit. I can't. I can me to my shoulder. It's wrecked. Yeah, they got a big chunk right ahead of their power unit. Get our spacesuits, Hap. We're going in and get them. Hap, the cluster isn't all going in the same direction. It's in a swirly motion like a whirlpool. It's battering the ship to pieces. Hurry, Hap. Keep moving. If one of those hunks of uranium wrecks our ship, none of us will ever get back alive. Look, Commander. The nose port. It's cracked. Isn't the big break. Hurry, we gotta get money into our ship before this one's riddled. Yes, sir. Get in the airlock. Now into our ship. Now we'll drop them in right here and we get the ship away from this hot spot. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll close the inner hatch. Take off your helmet. All right, release magnetic holding field. Field out, sir. Now to fire rockets and get away from this uranium bombardment. We made it, sir. We're out of the stream. Yes, but look at the other ship. A hole the size of a space car all the way through the control compartment. We got out of there just in time. We're heading for Terra. You take care of our passengers. Fence is coming around. Uh, O'Malley. O'Malley. He's safe, Fence. Just lie still and I'll, I'll bandage that shoulder. So that's O'Malley, huh? Yeah, it is. You know, Commander, this makes twice you two have saved my life. That may be. But if you don't mind telling me, why did you run away from the hospital and come out here on this wild expedition? Well, O'Malley and I wanted to get a share of that uranium so we could prove I didn't steal the chunk you found in the other ship. And to make yourselves a fortune, huh? Well, I, I guess that did enter into it. You took all that risk for nothing, Pence. We've known for some time you didn't steal that uranium. Then O'Malley and I are free. O'Malley is, but you aren't. You can't go around slugging space patrol personnel and get away with it. You remember the instance of Cadet Happy in the hospital. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. You'll have to take whatever punishment or fine is coming for you. Well, I'm sunk. I can't pay any fine. I'm broke. <laughs> He's a comedian. That's the it. truth. Took all the money I had to leave the spaceship. Talk strangely, Pence, for a man with a million credits worth of uranium. Huh? That uranium you brought in your ship, it's yours by right of discovery. And now, an exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are in a relay communication station in space. Jim Comar, who is in league with a strange alien power, is using some mysterious crystals 
forcing Buzz and Happy to obey him against their will. The crystals are getting brighter. That's all I can see or even think about. The crystals. Keep walking. Up to the generator. Closer. Closer. Happy, fight it. Touch the connection. Reach out your hand. Don't touch it, Happy. I, I, I can't hold back. If you touch it, you'll be finished. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Seed Pistols of Zal Debran. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Bela Kovach and Ken Mayer, Dick Tufel speaking. Now don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local newspaper for time and channel. And now, a special word to mothers about a clever new idea. A salad that looks like a queen's crown, studded with jewels. It's peach coronation salad. One of the easiest and thriftiest salads you've ever made. All you need is creamy cottage cheese, bits of maraschino cherries and pan clean peaches from California. To make peach coronation salad taste its luscious best, serve with rye crisp, those crisp, toasty wafers with a wonderful, hearty rye flavor. For pictures of peach coronation salad, watch newspapers and magazines during the entire month of March. Your grocery is also featuring this colorful salad. Look for coronation salad displays at his store today. Be sure to serve with rye crisp, the perfect food to make other foods taste even better. For your figure's sake. Make your bread rye crisp all the time. Only 21 calories in a double square. The famous rye crisp reducing pan is printed right on the package. Remember, it's smart to make your bread rye crisp. Space Patrol comes to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>